Ryan, good. Here we go. Oh, pretty heavy. Pretty heavy. Pretty. Okay. And action. Go, James. You know, we're trying to fill in the battle that was fought in a monsoon that was darkening, and even one little ray of light, if it creeps into the, if it even creeps in through the canopy, we've got to reshoot the film again. So I'm sitting beside the director, making sure that the actions look as authentic as we can get them. Yes, sir, thanks. And action! When I say go, everyone get up and fall back 150 metres and regroup! Go, go, go! One of the big challenges, of course, is to tell a story and make it uh, interesting, understandable for an audience, um, while maintaining it as an experience of war and of a very intense battle. We're not saying, this is you in the battle. What we're doing is we're saying, this is what it was like for our diggers. I think we'll get out of this one, Skip. I don't think so, Drinky. I don't think so. Looks like our guys over there. Don't smoke. They might be 11 platoon. Just give me another take on that. So You're rolling. And, and action. There's so many perspectives and so many bits of the story to tell. We have to be selective. Um, we have to maintain a sense of chaos that was happening in the battle, but hope that our audience comes out with a bit of understanding of what actually went on. Of course, hardly anyone who was involved in the battle knew what was happening elsewhere. Someone like uh, Colonel Townsend would because he was communicating with so many people and some of the platoon commanders would, but uh, for a lot of the guys on the, on the ground, and this, is, this goes for any war and any battle, that's their perspective on it. Um, we're lucky with this project that um, a lot of our major players are still alive and we're able to communicate with them, get detail. One of the functions I have as, a, as an ex-soldier is to make sure that these people are acting like soldiers and that they, it's, it's as realistic to the battle as we can make it. They didn't all wear standard equipment. Um, some people wore parachute belts, some people wore harnesses on their equipment, other people didn't. It was a mixture of American equipment and old Second World War equipment. And so we've had to go out and source this equipment to make it as realistic as we can to the day on which the battle was fought. One of the difficulties is getting actors to look, dress and walk like soldiers. And we were very lucky in the fact that the army gave us uh, a section of infantry and that made it a lot easier. But you still have to go out and make sure that they're lying in a proper firing position uh, as much, much as they would. But it, but those infantrymen made it made the job a lot easier, rather than having to train the, all the actors on how to lie and, and and the words that they would use. To give respect and, and uh, honour to the veterans who survived, we coordinated with them and talked to them about details. We actually spoke to the major participants in the battle, so that that's where we got the detail from. Uh, the memorial went right through the artillery logs and radio logs that were taken down on the day, and that is where the dialogue has come from. So it's the actual dialogue used during the battle. 481 direction GT, six rounds far for effect, estimated company to front of Fox Sound, Cold Zone 4 2, over. One of the most difficult things was finding uh, an armoured personnel carrier of the type that was actually used in the battle, uh, because the Australian Army has newer types of uh, armoured personnel carrier. What we found, however, was uh, the one that was used by Lieutenant Adrian Roberts in the battle. It's in Townsville, and the Army was kind enough to lend us that armoured personnel carrier, and the actual carrier that was used at the Battle of Long Tan is used in the film. Against it. If, you, if, you, if we get a few bushes yeah. and just 
literally stand there with your back against it, walk along the side so that it's scraped. Yeah. Now, make like a car wash. <laughs> Where we're shooting is very difficult because there are no rubber plantations in Australia. We've actually ended up in this wonderful place, which is a hardwood plantation up in Mackay. Um, luckily the leaves stay on, um, but then it doesn't have the breadth um, and uh, depth that a long tan itself did, so we've had to work in very confined spaces and work with light. The other thing, of course, is a battle happens in the last three hours of daylight, um, ending in, in pitch black when the um, Armoured personnel carriers finally arrive at company headquarters and um, this time of the year we really only have probably a couple of hours in the morning, a couple of hours in the afternoon that simulate that sort of light. So we're working around um, trying to fit everything in in a very short shooting time. Um, luckily we have a great crew that's um, been able to, to work with that. That's a wrap! Fantastic. <laughs>